This tutorial is on the eyedropper tool, which may seem boring at first, but there's a few cool little hidden features. So first off, the keyboard shortcut is I, and by default it picks up whatever color you click on. When you hold Option, it drops the current appearance onto whatever object you click on. So first I'll just show, so by default, if you just click on an object, it picks up the fill and stroke color along with all the stroke properties like the stroke weight and the dash and any of these settings. Um, if you only want to pick up the color of the of whatever object you click on, just hold shift. And then whether you have fill or stroke selected, it'll just apply that color to whatever is selected. So right now I have stroke active. I'll just shift click, picks up that dark purple. If I hit X, now fill is selected. I can shift click on the light purple or the dark purple and it applies it to the fill. Uh, if you watched my tutorial on the appearance panel, then you should be familiar with complex appearances. So this has a fill color and a pattern fill along with a stroke. So it, it works the same when you click on an object. Well, here, I'll make a new object, default appearance. So if you just click on it, it picks up the most recent fill and stroke, but it will only pick up one stroke and one fill. So in this case, it was the pattern. If I wanted it to pick up just this color and the stroke, then I would have to select this fill and make it the focal fill. Now select this object, click with the eyedropper tool and it picks that up. Um, but if you hit return or enter with the eyedropper tool selected, it pulls up the options. And that's where you can see, this is what it's currently picking up. Focal fill is whatever the last fill selected was. If an object has multiple fills, same with focal stroke. You can turn off, if you know that you don't ever want to pick up the stroke weight, you can just turn this off. I like to keep the eyedropper picks up settings the same, just as the default, but eyedropper applies. I check all appearance. So what this does is when I select this object, it loads all of the strokes and fills into the appearance panel. And when I deselect it, it keeps that appearance set. So it doesn't matter if this is selected or not. I'll hit eyedropper tool and option click on this other object and it applies all of the fills and all of the strokes and if you had any effects applied, that all gets transferred over. So then you can still use it as normal for picking up. So I can change this fill to this light blue. I can change the stroke to this turquoise by shift clicking. Um, but then if I want to quickly apply this new pattern or this new appearance, then I just option click on another object. Uh, so the other thing, if you pull up the options again, you can see the raster sample size. By default, it's point sample, but you can do averages, 3x3 three three or 5x5 five five average. So what that means, I will apply this appearance just to, just to show you what that 5x5 five five average looks like. So I'm just scaling the pattern down so it's a little tighter dot pattern. Now I will rasterize the object at 72 dpi. And so if you zoom in, I'm gonna make a five by five pixel square. So this is, uh, this is a five by five area. This is how big that average is gonna be. If I have, so I have five by five average set now to the eyedropper tool. If I click in the middle, it's gonna take the average of this size area. So if I, if I just click and scan around, you can see up here in the color panel, the color doesn't really change a whole lot because it's this consistent dot pattern. Um, it's just finding an average between this turquoise and blue. If I change that to point sample, then it's gonna pick up one pixels color at a time. So I can get this really bright turquoise or I can get this really dark navy. So it just depends on what you're doing. Sometimes you might want to get an average color if there's a lot of variation in an object, if it's really textured. Um, I typically just keep that point sample though. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, requests for other tutorials, just leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.